Hey, how's it going? Um, I wanted to show you today, I've been seeing a lot of videos about the new MetaHuman, uh, Mesh to MetaHuman, but I'm not seeing very many tutorials that go much further than what the Unreal Engine um, Epic Games provided on the initial launch of loading it in using the automatic generation. But what happens if your automatic generation is not right? Like it doesn't it doesn't match. Uh, how do you adjust those points? I couldn't find any real information uh, through the video or you know doing some Google searching because it's such a brand new system. So I wanted to show you um, how to take a model that's maybe quite stylized and then create some stylized metahumans with it. It's not perfect. There are some issues um, because in the Unreal Engine. Um, the metahumans, they cannot handle eye changes, like how large the eyes can get. So if you make the eye sockets too big, you're going to have to tailor them down, remove the influence um, uh, on the web version when you upload it up to um, the metahuman uh, cloud stuff. So what I have, I have a few models. I have um, a few models from the, the Daz Studios. I have Victoria 1. The old school model that came out in uh, 1999. I have the girl, and I have a uh, Genesis one with the more for Jasmine. Um, and these can be anything. Um, I didn't have too many scans of people's heads, but considering it was a non-water type mesh, um, you can technically use any 3D mesh out there um, to trace over. You use the same technology. So um, you need to import the meshes. I used Blender, so I imported uh, the model. I got rid of any eyelashes or any uh, geometry around the head that can interfere with the tracing uh, because it will snap to uh, geometry. So you need to kind of pay attention if you have like hair or eyelashes or any accessories on the head, you need to remove those. Um, also, um, you can, you don't have to bring in the materials, it does make it easier. Um, I did uh, do all this correction in uh, in um, lit mode, so it doesn't have to be in unlit. Unlit, the algorithm does a little bit better job of picking up the faces, but uh, you can do uh, manual adjustments. So when we get started. Um, Victoria one is a little bit more humanish, where um, the auto uh, thing picked up quite a few things right off the bat. Um, pretty easily so the, the girl is super stylized so let me boot up um, I'll show you what the mesh looks like Oop. so quite a bit stop all right turn that speed down so the mesh is quite stylized um, lips are big you got the nose and eyes and when you first start doing some of the generation, it doesn't come out very right, especially for the eyes, the creases, and um, and different parts of the facial feature. So why don't we do this? So I did this once before, but I'll go through it um, again. So you have to, uh, a lot of the videos do this step too. You go to where the asset's located. Um, it doesn't have to be where the asset's located, but it just makes things easier. You right click, you do MetaHuman, um, you're going to do a metahuman um, identity, then you're going to call it, this is going to be, you know, the girl. And it can't be the same name as the, the mesh you brought in. So um, I'm going to call this the girl um, test one. And then just double click on it. It'll bring you into a, a new window. Uh, you should have the login window come in, uh, pop up. I just pulled mine off screen just in case if it showed, showed my email. Um, all right, so we're back here. We're back here. Um, we need to add the component. So I'm going to look up for me. It's called the girl. It's going to come in. And then one thing I did also notice, the camera speed you do. There is no camera like uh, movement speed I could find in here. So you would have to go out here, adjust it maybe. Um, I don't think – I think you might go off the same speed as you have – inside the component view mode because this feels definitely like um two or one whatever i said it 
so going back to this, so a lineup, a view where uh, you can see um, the front of the face, um, the chin, sometimes a little, maybe a little underneath it. Uh, the ones I saw from the Unreal Engine tutorial changed the, the FOV to 20. And what that means, from what I understand, it becomes more like a, a, a telephoto lens, which makes everything a lot flatter. So you're going to have less distortion. Um, so what we're going to do from here is, once you have kind of the angle you want, I feel like this is good for me, I'm going to select the neutral pose. And what we're going to do now is we're going to say click on the promote frame. And what this does, from my understanding, um, is... Um, oops, so that's actually not right. All right, so once you start creating these these keyframes and you lock the camera, uh, you won't be able to move the camera itself. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we have the spot that we want. And then what we're going to do is we're going to right-click. Um, this might not be the correct order, but this is what worked for me. So I click on the tracking uh, auto on, and we'll have this... Thing where I think it's the service that does contact the, the the cloud services to generate the initial um, trackers, but uh, all the rest of the generation uh, is on your local machine. So left eye not very good, right eye is okay. Mouth does a pretty good job, even on the most stylized characters I've imported in. Mouth and these kind of uh, creases around the the cheeks. Um, have done a great job. So at this point, most of the tutorials just say, oh, just, uh, you know, lock this camera off. Lock camera, and then, you know, you click this button, and then you send it off. But what happens if things don't look good? Um, and it took me a long time to kind of figure out that you have to lock the camera. What this allows you to zoom in. And then if you... Hover your mouse over some of these points. You can actually click and drag and, and move them. And then uh, you can actually click and drag and move the whole uh, whole spine as you, as you would. Um, for anyone who's done um, AI training for like facial um, recognition, this should look sort of familiar. Uh, there's a lot of this kind of um, inside that industry. Uh, I've done some myself, and I felt kind of at home um, with this kind of method. So let's just start. So um, the right hand side is kind of your different layers, which a lot of times they say just ignore. But I'm going to go through some of them. So some of them that I didn't see a lot of the YouTubers use. Oh yeah, by the way, right click is to move your screen around. Left click is to uh, select objects. And to deselect, you find an open area and you left left mouse button. Um, I'm going to say left mouse button, right mouse button, um, just because it's a little bit quicker. Um, left mouse button is obviously the left click. Right mouse button is the right click. Um, and uh, so, okay, going down. So you have two options. So visibility is kind of like a traditional Photoshop um, turning on and off. So if we turn this on, you think, like, well, where the brow left's missing. It's like, where is it? Oh, it's right here. So that was completely off inside the the AI just took a swing and just missed. <clears throat> so we want to make sure it's like, okay, so this is the right eye. So this is actually even on the incorrect side. So this needs to even go somewhere over here. So we're going to do like a rough lay-in. We're going to move kind of the parts to kind of the rough area. And then it's easier then to then refine. Kind of you do your broad strokes, then you go in and refine. But if you were to generate this mesh, this is actually technically not active. You actually have to click, and that's why it's grayed out. You have to then click the active button, then it turns green. So now this will actually be taken into account when it's part of the generation of the model. So what we're going to do, I'm going to just kind of go um, probably top down, just so we go through all the different options. So brow, this model right here, the reason why I use lit because if I use unlit, there's no way in heck I'm able to see some of the, fa the facial de uh, details. But you lit, I can get a sort of an idea. 
So I'm going to start just kind of rough guessing where some of this is. Um, and this is a little tedious, but this is kind of the part where you just put on some nice music and then you just kind of get your creative juices flowing. Oh, not really creative juices flowing. This is the busy work that I love doing just because it feels like I'm being productive with, uh, without high level thinking. And then I'm thinking like, well, maybe middle of the eyebrow is going to go something something like this and this is such being early development that i wouldn't be surprised if you run into some uh, few visual bugs i ran into a few where the mesh looks like it was exploding and i pretty much then had to just kind of reset the the whole like uh, tracker system and then it, it like then it will fix it, fix it itself so all right um well, you might be saying, I like this, but like these empty spots right here, maybe I want to add a few vertices without having to move uh, any of these. Well, in this situation, I didn't know if there's any particular keys, but I discovered was shift, holding the left shift and left mouse button, you can, oh, sorry, not shift, control. You can add points to particular areas. And then if you basically have this thing selected, you just deselect it by selecting an empty area. I found that to happen quite a, quite a bit. You just refine, refine, refine. All right, I think that looks good. And maybe you want to see the how this is going. Um, this is an, a really interesting method. There is a lot of um, back and forth. You can see kind of how it's progressing without having to commit to a final model. So there's this button up here that says the MetaHuman Identity Solver. <clears throat> and what you can do is you click on this. It'll run it. It might take a few a few moments, depending on your computer, because this is a local uh, process, not a um, uh, cloud cloud based for this part right here. If you switch to the B, you can kind of see what's happening to the mesh. Uh, you can kind of see that it's pushing this up here. Um, it's kind of you see how jank our eye is over here, and so we're going to start getting to some of some of these, and you can kind of see how the mesh is uh, on the left side for the eyebrows is different than the right. Excuse me, sorry, I didn't clear my throat. Uh, so then we're going to move on to the brow brow right. That kind of more or less hit it in a, a pretty good spot, but we're going to try to match it similar to the other side. Unfortunately, I have not found any symmetrical tools that you can say, you know, mimic mimic one side to the other. A little tip I just uh, over my years of training uh, different AIs, with this kind of visual stuff is better if you have to do broad strokes is to cut down on the number of vertices that you have to move and then add them back when you get it into more of that um the shape that you want so we're gonna do because i don't really know right now looking at what's going on if it doesn't matter if it matters how many vertices you have if it will um, grab more geo or if it's just the general influence um, from one side to the other some people have kind of wondered if you could do this with a photograph um, part of me kind of says yes because if you see this artifacting over here I think what it is is actually taking a picture and you're actually tracing over a 2d image but it's actually using like kind of a locator system on um, the mesh to kind of pull the points into the right spot. I think it's like a really advanced kind of shrink wrap uh, kind of modifier like from like Blender and some other kind of crazy math. I'm feeling the distance. I'm actually using my fingers to measure the distance from the eye right here to here and then kind of doing that with my other side to try to maybe match. That's feeling a little bit better. And I don't have the perfect perspective on some of this, this is like a little bit kind of, um, yeah, it's not, it's not perfect, which is for my case, that's fine. You know, like art is, can have a little bit of imperfections in it. All right. So let's maybe see what's going on with this. So what we're going to do is hit the, 
the metahuman identity solver. I was having some issues earlier when I did really pointed elf ears. Like one side would really match perfectly, but the other side couldn't actually get that actual peak. So we're gonna do now. <clears throat> so yeah, I pushed it, pushed it up. It's looking pretty good. So we're gonna go, <clears throat> we're gonna go back to A. And we're gonna go to the eye left. So this is where there's actually a lot more options in the eye than I've seen a lot of other YouTube tutorials. So we're gonna go to the eye crease left. We're gonna make sure that this is, and I wouldn't recommend doing control Z because I don't know if that actually works or not yet. So this is the left eye. So I wanna make sure because sometimes it will throw um, stuff in the wrong side of the face. I've had that happen to me. So I'm just gonna kind of follow the eye crease of this model. Um, was pretty good in the first place but since we're here we can refine it even more i'm going to activate it so i lower left <clears throat> kind of took me a little bit to figure this out so all eyelids kind of have a, a a thickness to them so it's not like incredibly flat so i lower left is kind of right on the lip of the eye and then the eye outer left is kind of where the other lip kind of is. It's not actually kind of considered down here. It's actually kind of right where you see this small faint black line. That's kind of where the outer <clears throat> lip is going to go. And the inner lip is going to kind of go right where the eye meets. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the eye lower. We're going to move a little bit down, deselect it. And um, this and then it's actually one thing that's really interesting. This part right here is the upper, and this is the lower. So where these two things connect is where the corners of the eyes are, are going to go. So if you have a really stylish character and it's the corner of the eye is quite, quite a bit different, like say like a Pixar Disney character, um, it's sometimes I was uh, turning off the um, turning off the visibility of one of the other. So I would maybe was was turning this out to know where where this corner is. Because uh, you don't want to start wrapping stuff up here like this because you'll get really weird results. So we're going to have both of them on because this is an eye. It's small enough where I can kind of figure out where stuff's going to go. Again, this is going to be very tedious. But this is kind of, for me, this is kind of a lethargic. And oh, I hate that. That's the one thing I do hate. All right. And then we're going to then do, I don't know how to say this, but this is pretty much, uh, let's go to the upper. Just let's adjust this too. And you can zoom in pretty close. Uh, it gets more pixelated. That's why I believe this is, it turns it into like a screenshot because if it was the actual 3D model, you wouldn't, I don't think you would have this kind of, uh, uh, artifacting <clears throat> and let's just adjust this a little bit right here this is the, the tear duct um this right here is pretty much the tear duct and majority of the time it does a pretty good job of placing it but um sorry again i had to clear my throat um majority of the time uh i just kind of activate it and then tweak it a little tiny bit this this is pretty uh pretty close uh, even on the other side. Eyelid upper. This is kind of where it gets kind of crazy, uh, my opinion, because it's everything's so close to each other. Um, but I was looking at some of the good generations of like uh, like realistic humans, where you pretty much just everything gets auto completed. And this is pretty much how they had their 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 upper eye. And that's why I was able to infer it's literally the the small skinny part right around the eye. So we're going to activate that. All right. Okay, then we're going to activate the bottom. And see, that was quite a bit off. But this allows you to get really um, kind of refined interesting characters uh, i was able to match the style it almost feels like it's like like don't copy my homework uh, like you know but make it here's my homework but you know don't copy make it different 
it's it's like that ultimate expression. It actually does like it copies it, but it makes it feel like there's inspiration from the original model, but it's not like a direct copy. <clears throat> so let's take a look and see what this see what this looks like. All right, that's starting to look pretty cool. You can start seeing that where the tear duct is. I've seen the eye, and I'll just move on to the move on to the other side. So there, here's the right eye. We're gonna do the eye crease, and then oh, I know you can select the whole thing. That's cool. I don't know, could you actually do that? Oh, there you go. You can. All right, that's good to know. Um, so we're gonna activate that. We're gonna deselect. We're oh, select, select. See this? Sometimes it just it just becomes a little bit of a pain. But all good things come with age. All right. Or, or come with maturity, I guess. So, okay. So, that looks good for that. We're going to then eyelid lower. That is really off. So, I'm just going to kind of roughly move it <clears throat> to its spot and then start adjusting it from there. Then I feel like I need a point there, so I'm going to hold control. And to remove points, you can deselect, hold control, and right click. And that's a pretty common thing for the, um, the AI industry when you're tracing over uh, facial stuff, either for blurring for like Google or you know other stuff for like that. It's, the, it's a very similar uh, control layout. So, which is kind of an interesting, unintended uh, skill <laughs> developed over the years is moving fine points around. All right. I feel like that needs to be right there. All right, then I'll turn on the next one is I read uh, upper. We kind of were adjusting that a little bit too. Just take another look. I feel like this can be a little bit lower. Maybe I'll add a point right here. Point right here better all right we're gonna add the tear duct thing uh, select all right and then we're gonna make sure to activate that and then next we're gonna do is we're gonna do the eyelid lower that's really off all right so let's move that this is again right here. These some of these end ones are going to be where the top is. So we go through this. We're going to shift. Uh, sorry, not shift. Right click is to move. Move your pan your screen. All right. Activate that, the visibility for this top one. We're going to do this. It'd be kind of cool if they maybe had a soft select <coughs> capability where you could uh, uh, decrease or decrease the fall off of how much the effect you want to have. Also, maybe having an actual undo feature here. I don't know. Me doing Control Z will work. It's not actually discussed. And, I'll try it out later for the Control Z, but I'm not right in the middle of a, trying to show you guys this. I don't want to risk it. All right, so that's looking okay. And then let us activate that. And then we're going to do MetaHuman Identity Solver again and see if that fixed the other eye. Sometimes I've gotten graphical bugs. And then it looks like that eye has now been fixed. So we're then going to go back to this. The hard part is is the eyes. Um, sometimes the ears look kind of uh, are hard. The ears in this case look pretty good. They're human esque. If you want to do, I'll show you the ears. Um, I normally do. There's only two things for the ears. There is the outer. Let's go through the upper lips. Pretty much good to go. Um, lower lips. 
Capernaum. I, I don't know what this is. Oh, wait. That actually appeared on this one. I'll have to look this up. I don't know what this is. I'm guessing maybe it's a little bit of that chin part. But um, I'll have to look up the, uh, the anatomical term for that. Um, and then the nose, the nasals. I did these just because these are, I kind of understand what these are. So if this is, I want to make sure this is the nasals right. I want to make sure I'm doing all of this right. Okay, yep, this is the right side. Making sure. Sometimes screen right versus character right is a little bit different, so sometimes I get confused. So I just double check by confirming. Um, and what I'm doing for this is if you were to, you know, this is kind of gross, but stick your finger inside your nose, where would you be considered inside your nose? So I feel like it's kind of, you know, right on the inside part. Um, and then we can also, also take a look and see how well it, it generates. So nostril left, that was really off. And when I say really off, it means this is actually not being taken into a part of the generation, of the auto generation, if, if it's grayed out like this. So it's going to generate more realistic results. And these are kind of the fine-tuned uh, kind of controls that you can do for your character. All right, so then we're going to activate that. Now let's just see what that looks like. All right, so sorry about the Discord sound, so I wish I forgot to close it before. So it's looking pretty cool. I feel like maybe I should move the nostrils over, over to the left a little bit. I mean to the right wherever this direction is. All right. All right, moving on to the ears. This is where, for me, it started getting a little bit um, hard, <clears throat> mostly because I want to turn on all of them. I just want to turn on the hel uh, helix, outer and inner. Sometimes it does a good job. I'm just going to turn on the outer. It didn't do a very good job here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start adjusting it. And this is kind of like, I wouldn't say the edge, of the ear, it's right on the cusp where kind of the fold kind of is where, where it starts. Um, and then all right, so I'm going to activate that and see how that changes how it looks. Right. So it made it a little bit more uh, cartoony. This is a lot more realistic. This is a lot more cartoony. So then what I'm going to do now is also maybe try the inner helix. And what that is I'm going to do is this I kind of guess a lot more. So I'm guessing it's like right here. Something like this, maybe? That looks like something. All right, let's turn it on and see what happens. All right, let's do the solver. Give it a B. Yeah, it looks okay. It doesn't look terrible. And then, uh, the knife recreate on the other side. I do wish there was like a. So this one it gets a lot more complicated. I don't know. Lower like is this like here, that upper. So yeah, I don't know. There hasn't been really a video or documentation talking roughly where these ones should go. So I'm gonna just move on to the next, the next one. Sometimes it gets weirdly stuck, so if you pan over on a menu, your thing, your mouse gets stuck, so you just right-click again. Um, so we're just going to adjust this. Outer. 
sometimes I've dragged it into the head like that. It did create some more stylized results with like the neck. But um, in this case, we're just going to pull it up. And what I'm going to do, since there's two, I feel like there's way too many vertices here. I'm just going to cut them down. I don't have to adjust as many. All right. Pump them like this. Close to the edge. Alignment. All right. And then we're going to activate. Move on to the next. I did it actually a pretty good job. We're going to modify this. Oh, I guess I'm modifying the whole thing. Uh, okay, sure. Yeah. Like this? Why not? All right, we're going to activate that. All right. I just all of us take a look. Make sure the model's not exp exploded. All right, so we're going to be... All right, doesn't, doesn't look bad. Um... Yeah, all right, so let's, I feel like all the last thing we have to do is just select the select the body. So uh, I'm going to go down to body. The original female was a thin model. Um, so I'm just going to go, you can add change it in the editor, so it really doesn't matter. I'm going to select the body, and then we're going to say mesh to metahuman. And then I'm going to bring up the metahuman website as we're doing this because I can then cut this down in editing if I choose to do so. So overall, the mesh looks pretty stylized. Um, this eye system probably will not work because currently in the system right now for metahumans, you cannot increase the eye size. There's some weirdness kind of happening right there. It is now available on the bridge. Okay, cool. Oh, disappeared. All right. I don't know if that's supposed to happen, but it did. So. Oh, right there. Okay, cool. I don't know why. Uh... Oh, I can just click on frame for that frame. All right, go back. Yeah, so it looks like there's some weirdness to happen maybe right here. Maybe the vertices were too close. So let me make sure my username's not on there. All right. All right, cool. So this is what it's starting to look like. So there is some jankiness happening with the eyes, obviously. So what we're going to do is we're going to click the edit selected. And we're going to go to the – so this is the skin for now just so we can get a, a look on how the skin will actually um, do it. And – the more you make the eyes big, you get this really weird kind of issue happening. And to fix that, you go to the custom mesh. You select the areas which you want to have less influence. And then the regions of influence, you just bring, you bring down. And it will slowly kind of bring that, bring those eyes in. So you kind of do a little bit of both. You kind of like that, 50% influence in that. And we'll kind of bring this down as well. Maybe I should have to bring that to zero and bring this down. A little bit more and then there you go you got your semi stylized head i don't know why there's a crease bump right there whatever um but yeah uh then you can you know, do random facial random expressions and uh this always part always amazes me so yeah so it's interesting uh kind of um take on doing semi stylized characters uh without uh, being able to, and as you can see, if you do the middle of the eyebrow, it actually modifies where the the eyelashes go. So yeah, there you go. Hope you enjoyed this thing. Um, you know, as more stuff comes out, maybe I'll do some more kind of uh, more deep dives. I'm I'm assuming that they're gonna start doing this stuff with the body as well, so we'll be able to eventually. Put in the body, draw similar lines where you have you have things, and be able to generate custom custom bodies for this. Um, I'm a pretty big Daz user, so for me this is interesting, but still the flexibility on uh, the library of clothing and morphs for Daz Studio still um, is better than this. But this is coming really cool. So hope the video. I hope you like the video, um, and I'll see you guys later.